Hello, it's David here, and um, thank you for taking an interest in my book, A Complete Scale of Harm and Practice of Clarinet, Saxophone, and Flutes. The purpose of this exercise of showing you a little bit about it, we're using the clarinet book, and um, okay, here we go. Okay, so what's so important about this? What I'll tell you is, why, what makes this different from any other scale or system that you may have heard or see or possibly use? Well, the problem, the difference is, is probably that it's, it's just the way it's put together and the various different devices that we use. And it is, the purpose of it is primarily for people, for the classical musicians who are interested in knowing more about devices to use to improvise because most, many, many classical musicians, they're excellent at reading, but if they're in a situation where they have to be a little creative with their instrument, you know, they, they stutter a little bit or they, they found you a bit or they're not sure. But just imagine you go through a system like this where you have, you know, such devices and 12 keys and a fishing packet and you know it and you memorize it and you practice it with different rhythms and different times etc. using um, different tempos, you'll find that you'll have an incredible array of tools at your disposal. So okay, let me talk a little bit about the system. It starts in E major, E being the bottom of the clarinet, and then the clarinet, unless of course you're playing the bass clarinet, then you could be playing an E flat, an E flat or an E C bass clarinet, but okay. I started with that clarinet and so the lowest note is E major. It goes straight up and down with broken, then into broken, modular, I call it. So, what is the purpose of having playing a, a broken major scale? Well, apart from it sounding very interesting and giving you a lot more dexterity on the instrument, you know that um, on, every, on each degree of a major scale, the mode is for like on, for example, E to E would be Ionian, F sharp to F sharp, and E major would be Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Locrian, Mitzlidian, Aeolian, Loc, etc. Um, so I can get it right, I mean, so I can get it wrong. Um, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mitzlidian, Aeolian, Locrian, back to I own it. Okay, so they're modes and they sound very different to each other. And they're all of them on a major scale. So if you're practicing a broken scale, inadvertently you can actually start experimenting with each mode, which is one of the great things about broken scales. Okay, so we have broken scales, so we're only going to go to harmonic minor, an E harmonic minor, then same thing broken. Now on a broken harmonic minor scale, you have a different set of possibilities in terms of grade scale sound. We have the raised uh, seventh, section and the same down. Then you have the, the melodic minor, where you have the raised sixth and seventh and they're, and they're counted up going down, on the way down. Then we introduce Coltrane changes based on the tonality, the tonal center we're working. In this case, we we move from E major to E minor, so we're E, e minor. So John Coltrane, if you're aware, aware of John Coltrane, he was a great Amer American musician, tenor saxophone player, soprano saxophone, a wonderful musician, incredible technical bits. There would be played beautiful music with a great ballad ear, and one of the main contributions to Western music was. This, um, this pattern that he's created is known as um, Coltrane Changes, which were introduced in his album Giant Steps. And uh, it's a very famous um, try pattern, which are these um, like kind of like um, third kind of third pattern based, based uh, system. And you can play it here. I've written out an example of how it can be used, of course. It can be turned up down inside that in numerous ways. 
but I've given you an example of the key of how it can be used. So once you have the idea in your head, the idea is that you have the sounds in your head and then you have the harmonies in your head. I haven't put the chords to confuse, confuse because I'm assuming not, not everybody knows about chord music. So I'm um, coming from the approach of hearing things and hearing how things sound and hearing how various different patterns and styles relate to different keys, etc. And the idea is eventually you start putting things, hearing things in your own way and starting moving combinations of patterns yourself and using different rhythms and different timings and different in the scales, which should be a completely organic process, not like a analytical process, but something that's just start happening naturally. To start using this system to become to create melodies and musical ideas. At the end of the day, we're making music. We're not just like this scale playing robots. We are musicians. So this is the idea here. Okay, moving on. So if you look at this, the cool train changes. It goes to the Tonic, and then you go through, and we play auto scales. Well, now, like an auto scale is basically a scale where the auto tensions are auto the second, the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, etc. And they sound very nice, and they can be used to color a dominant seventh scale, or a major seventh scale, or a minor scale. And the idea is not to become too analytical or technical about it. The idea is just to play through the 12 keys and you'll hear it. You'll begin to hear the sounds and the scales at the time and you have them on your fingers and how to make them sound good. And you'll be able to hear how to apply them. When you hear something in one key, you start hearing different possibilities of culture, of culture harmony or major harmony or modes and, and altered scales, and broken altered scales. Here you are, we have them sort of broken altered scales of the nature. Of a sort, and it's interesting. We're tonicizing the new mind major arpeggios, so we get arpeggios as well as the scales. The, the arpeggio is broken, the minor arpeggios, the minor arpeggio is broken, which goes into, it goes down a tone in transition, in this case, C7, which they broken, up and down, broken. They, um, into the next key, which is the next key center, which is F major. So we move from E major, we've gone through all these scales, we've gone through we've gone through major, broken, and harmonic, minor, up and down, broken, and melodic minor, up and down, broken, into the train changes, into the altered scales, into arpeggios, into major and minor, then in the seventh, which actually sounds very nice, moving that move from the minor into the dominant seven sounds very nice. And what the idea is, is to start spending some time. When you become familiar with the various different keys, I really recommend go through all 12 keys because that will give you the coloration and the various different ideas and the technical possibilities. Don't just, don't just learn it in one key, just go through the whole thing. Try to do it every day. It will take you about no more than 40 minutes or so. Go through the whole thing every day. Before you know it, within a month you will have marked improvement in your playing technically, your oral ability, and you start getting able to hear things and color that you've never heard before, I promise you. Okay, and uh, just just do it. It's, it's a very good thing to do, as you can see, F major, it's true. Same thing again. Here you go, you have minor, minor, etc. Yeah, it's actually minor, really minor broken. All train changes again, it moves through different keys, altered scales, oops. No, there's nothing wrong with a double fat every now and again. It's good to become oops, a bit naughty, but not really. I think that's the only place in the whole system where we have double flats, I think so. Anyway. But it's actually quite intuitive and quite friendly. Because at the end of the day it's twelve different things repeating. Is the same thing repeating 12 times in different keys, pretty much. And you will start to play, play, play around with it and uh, spend some time. You might decide that you get interested in the major tonality. And so, for example, you do an F sharp in the major, and you decide you don't want to quite move to the minor just yet. You might want to stay on the major, and as well as play the major up and down and, and broken, you might decide you want to play in fourths or in 
files in, in tuplets or quin tuplets. You might be able to change the rhythm, you might want to add a swing element to it, so you might want to play be completely spontaneous with your rhythms, and uh, you might want to start experimenting with the altered scale on the F sharp major. And um, you know, and that's the beauty of it, you know. And then you might decide that you know you you're playing through the system, and you might you might say, okay, you might fall in love with. Let's take a look. The altered scale, and you say, oh, I like this altered scale. Oh, it really fills me. I really feel this key, and I really feel this environment, and I really want to get to know it better. And you might start playing around with the sense called the altered scales, and the or you might just decide to, you might just fall in love with the D7 and you start as well as playing it up and down and broken, you might start playing all different kinds of things in the tonality of D7. And that's the idea. And you do this on a regular basis and believe me you have a whole new array of tools under your fingers. And that's the whole point of it. Thank you for listening to me. But it's okay, it's only eleven ninety seven, which is pounds. Um, in the US, it might be a few dollars more, you know, or fifteen dollars or something. But buy it, it's very interesting and um, it's great. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Cheers.